are you doing another video about Toy Story again? Toy Story and Beyond! In a previous video, I showed you how to create that kind of plasticky toy look inside of After Effects using Element 3D. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I went about creating the Toy Story 4 logo in Element 3D. Let's do this. <laughs> So let's just dive right in to this project and create the Toy Story 4 logo from scratch. At first I thought this was going to be a custom logo job and I was going to have to hop into Illustrator here, grab my pen tool and start uh, tracing the logo and uh, after doing a little bit of research on the Googles, I uh, was quickly able to discover that this uh, typeface is actually Gil Sands or a variation of Gil Sands. They probably used or started out with Gil Sands and then went in and started um, manipulating uh, some things like here. Like you'll see, like this is kind of raised up here. Um, this Y looks a little bit different uh, as you'll see later on. Um, so I was kind of happy to discover that I didn't need to go about uh, doing all of this tracing because Element can use After Effects text layers uh, to extrude and generate geometry, which is uh, really good if you have to create a lot of title cards for a trailer or a promo, and you need to have live text to make those changes. In this particular case, um, I started out with uh, three text layers. So let's actually stop this. Let's create a brand new composition. We'll do 1920 by 1080. We'll do, we'll call this Toy Story Logo. Um, and we'll hit OK. We'll open this up. And then um, and you can add text in a bunch of different ways. You could right click and add a text layer that way. And then you just start uh, typing toy. Um, and, and then we have, um, or you could just click there. We got story. Um, and then we are going to do the number four. So um, those are our four text layers. And then we can just um, you can go to the where's my align palette uh, i guess i don't have my align palette okay uh that's all right so we can just uh because this is 1080 comp so we'll do 960 by 540 and that centers everything let's put it on the center there um and uh let's just go ahead and scale these up a little bit uh so they're a little bit bigger so those are our four text layers um, and, uh, and like I said earlier, they basically just used Gil Sands, uh, which, uh, is the font that I used. And I think they used ultra bold. This is bold right here. So we can just highlight all of those and change this to ultra bold. And yeah, see that S is exactly what, uh, what's in that reference. Um, so let's actually pull in that reference. Speaking of reference. So where is it here? Let's go right here. Let's pull this in. Okay. So that's, uh, let's move this up here. There's our reference right there. Perfect. Okay. So we can actually lock this so it doesn't move. And that's what I will do. Uh, but there is a little bit of customization in the, let's see, let's see. There's a little bit of customization in the T and the Y. And I could have very well, like I said, hopped into, whoops, hopped into Illustrator uh, and actually made those uh, customizations right there. Um, but it's just as easy to do that inside of After Effects. And I actually wanted to go ahead and show you how to do that in After Effects. And then after, you know, once it's all created in here, you don't have to worry about hopping back and forth and creating any illustrator files or anything like that. You can just right click on uh, the toy layer and then create masks from text and it will hide the text layer and it will uh, create a solid. And on that solid, if we show our layer controls, we see uh, masks that were created for T O N Y. Thankfully, you know, uh, element uses um, mask uh, layers as well to be able to extract to be able to extrude text, but just something to keep in mind. If you go this route, you no longer have live text and uh, live text is really beneficial. Uh, like I said earlier, if you need to create a lot of title cards for promos or anything like that, um, you could actually literally just uh, change the, uh, the text layer and it will update automatically. But since this is a logo, the, uh, the chances of needing to have live text are very slim to none. Also something to keep in 
mind, After Effects will create outlines at the size and settings of your text layer, which is why I sized up the text uh, to begin with. While you can always resize and scale up your masks um, after the fact, you might as well just do it before you create the outlines. So for that red plaque, I'm actually going to turn the layers off here. So for the red plaque that the story letters sit on, I just uh, created a, a rounded rectangle using the rounded rectangle tool up here in the uh, palette here. Um, and then I just uh, drew a box here. And then, oh, actually what I needed to do is I needed to actually create a... Uh, let's call this plaque. Um, I need to create a layer. And on here, I will actually create my text layer. And if you hit the up and down arrows, um, you can actually uh, adjust the size of the rounding. And once you have the rounding the way that you like, you just release the mouse. Uh, next, I actually took the selection tool. Uh, let's see, the selection tool right there. And I um, actually, I'm going to turn uh, this mask um, I'm going to turn this layer down so I can see what's behind it. So, um, I then took the selection tool and let's create, let's select these little curves right here. And I went ahead and see, as you can see right here, I kind of, uh, made the rounding a little bit, um, looser than probably what's here. But I, then I just took these mask points and I kind of got them to where I thought they should be or they should match up. And uh, there's my mask right there. Um, I probably should have aligned them more towards the edge of the front. Um, but, uh, but this, I mean, this works fine. This, the, again, like I said, I mean, this is a recreation. So now that we have all of our layers to make up our logo geometry, uh, we will, uh, create a solid and we'll call this E, uh, we'll call this E3D and we will apply element to this layer and, um, and then we will go inside of the custom layers and the text and masks. And uh, here's where we will tell Element which, um, uh, which items to look at. So we don't need the toy text layer. We need the toy outline layer. And we need story. And we need four. And then the plaque is actually right there. So I'm just ordering these around kind of how I would think that they should be. And then I'm just going to tell Element to look for toy outlines. And then path two will be story. And then path three will be plaque and then path four will be the number four okay so now that we have uh those set up we'll go into scene setup and we will hit extrude four times one two three four now all we see is toy and that's because element defaults to um custom path one um so we need to uh we need to tell element which path to look at to create the respective geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename these real quick. I'm gonna name this toy. Uh, I'm just double clicking. Um, let's name this uh, story. And uh, you could also right click and uh, where's rename? <laughs> right there, rename. And uh, we'll call this background uh, plate. And uh, then this one will be number four. Okay, and then so that one's all set and then we'll go into story and we'll create uh, custom path two and we'll go to the background plate. We'll create custom path three and then we will go into the number four and we will select custom path four. If we go through each of the objects in um, this uh, scene right here, we can see that the geometry came in correctly. And to solo an object inside of uh, the element scene, all you have to do is hold down the option and then click on this little icon. And to unsolo it, you obviously click it again. But um, And now that we can see that all of the objects have come in correctly, we can actually go back into After Effects and start positioning everything around. And as you can see, uh, everything's kind of all in the same spot. And since the next step is going to be uh, placing all of these pieces of geometry, we'll just go ahead and do, we're not going to worry about, but you could go through here and just turn off each group 
Uh, actually, I just realized that I didn't set up the groups. They're all on group layer one. We actually need to set these up into individual groups. So you can do this one or two ways. You could actually either put uh, everything into its own folder, or you can just hold down shift and select each one of these objects and then pull them out of the folder. And you can actually get rid of the folder altogether. And then we can leave toy on group one. We can put story on group uh, two. And then we could put the background plate on group four. I'm sorry, uh, three. What am I thinking? And then we put uh, that on group four. And then we click OK and go back into After Effects. So we could go into each one of these groups and turn off... Uh, turn off the individual layers uh, so that we are the individual groups so that we can see um, what we're doing a little bit easier. Um, and actually, we could actually just go ahead and start um, positioning these uh, particular elements. And the best way to do that is actually to give each group its own null object because that will actually make it a lot easier to kind of position in the scene. So we can go down to create group null and we'll create a group for uh, we'll create a null for group number four, which is right here. And like I said, as you can see right here, we can uh, kind of move this down and then we can uh, get the rotate tool and we can position this. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a little crazy. Uh, let's actually go into the rotate right here. Yeah, it's rotating on the orientation. We don't want to do that. We want it to rotate here like this. Um, and uh, we can move this up. And as you can see, the size is a little off, but that's okay. We will actually change that. Um, and I could use the scale to scale it up, but I'm going to leave the scale at 100%, and I'm actually going to go into uh, the element layer uh, or the element effect and go into the group and go into particle look and change the particle size. We'll scale this up. The other thing that you notice right away, too, is that the four looks different. Um, so this is actually something that we're going to have to customize, which we will do later. Let's go up to um, let's go up to toy. Let's position toy. So we're going to go in here. We're going to turn toy on. We're also going to give it its own null object. Um, so we got group null right there, and then we're going to move this kind of up into place. Now, I went ahead and I kind of used the O as my reference point. Um, to figure out how or where I'm going to place this. And again, and you can actually go into the uh, particle size or particle look parameter and turn up the particle size. And you can, let's get that kind of be right there. We're going back to the null object. And uh, we'll kind of position this uh, accordingly. And there we go. And as you can see, kind of the T and the Y are kind of off uh, in kind of a weird uh, place. But the other thing that you'll notice too is, uh, like I'd mentioned earlier in the beginning, the T and the Y are customized. They're uh, a lot different than the other layers. The other thing to note too is actually the uh, the center of the O is uh, probably, I probably should make that a little bit bigger. And we'll adjust that once we get into adjusting the actual mask itself. So once we go in and start fixing the T and the Y, we'll also go in and start fixing the kerning as well too. So with toy done and four kind of both uh, kind of temporarily done, let's go to story. So let's uh, go up to group uh, three or group two, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, let's click that on activate it. Okay. And we can see right away that we need to adjust uh, the size of story. So let's go into um, particle uh, particle size and we'll decrease that a little bit. And um, let's create a null object for group two so that we can take group two and kind of position it accordingly. Um, and as you can kind of see right away, some of the letters fit and some of the letters don't. Um, and so there's a kerning issue that we can adjust. Now we could go into element and we could go into scene setup and we could click on story here and we could change this uh, from material view to mesh view and we could twirl down story and then we have access uh, to each uh, one of these we could actually command click 
in the interface as well too and get a hold of each one of these and we can adjust we can move these around and uh, and then we can hit okay the problem with this is we don't really have a reference uh, to kind of see where we are at with kerning so what I uh, this is actually a perfect ex perfect example to kind of show off the better way of doing this so since story is a live text layer we'll cancel out of this uh, are you sure you want to cancel without saving yes I am sure so um, we will find the text layer that um, element is referencing and we can actually do one of two things we could go up into the uh, character palette and we can adjust the kerning here and as you can kind of see right away I'm uh, I'm adjusting actually let's unhide this story layer so we have this story layer right here let's move this off right there so we have story there let's turn off uh, the toy layer so it doesn't look uh, all that confusing and um, then we will go back into this and so let's adjust the kerning here in the character palette so what we can see as we're adjusting that text layer the kerning in the text layer it updates uh, automatically in element which is perfect which is great so we can kind of get close to kind of where we need to be and then let's just double click on the text layer itself and we can move individually between each layer to adjust the uh, kerning in between each of these letters. So we'll do this. We'll move this over and then we'll move, oops, move that back. Uh, move this over and then we'll move this and we can kind of get this to be kind of, let's get that O kind of right. And let's see where we are. There's the T. Uh, let's get that S over there. We might actually have to move the null layer um, to kind of adjust this a little bit, which I think we might actually have to do. Let's move this over. We'll just, there we go. Yeah, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to adjust. Actually, let's see if I do this. Let's turn that down. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back here. We'll turn this back to zero. There we go. So that story layer is kind of where we want it to be. And then let's, uh, so it's the O and the T. So we want some space between the O and the T. Uh, so if we adjust that, yeah, see we're doing there. And now actually let's go up to the null. Let's move this over a little bit. And okay, we're gonna actually call that done. That's pretty close. Actually, I'm gonna be, a little uh, anal and actually get in there. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here for now. Uh, this tutorial is getting a little long. That's it for this tutorial. And if you liked uh, this video and you feel that like you got value out of it, definitely give me a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification icon so you can be notified when new content is available. And I would love to see what you guys are doing with Element. So you can also leave that in the comments below and leave me links. I would love to check out to see what you guys are doing. Doing. And until the next time, I'm Ben. See you later. <laughs> so that's it for this tutorial. And if you guys feel that you got value out of uh, this kind of video and you want to see more of it, definitely know. I'm not going to say that. Okay, hang on. Okay, we're recording and.